This is an old dredge barge built out of wood and old car parts from the early 20s and 30s. We're gonna go explore this thing and see how it's built. A barge like this would have been used to uh, dredge boat slips to maintain in the harbor. And they were using this boat just 20 years ago in Cape May. It is pretty awesome. This is totally stuff that I'm into. And it's pretty cool that, you know, they built it out of what they had to get done a job that needed to get done. That they would stick down in the mud and use to dredge the slip out. The guy that I was talking to at the marina here said that these are leaf springs out of uh, Model T or Model A Fords from the 1930s that they heated, bent, and welded into a dredge head. Look at this thing. It's made out of wood planks. This is crazy. Even the cleats are made out of straight wood. So instead of running salt water through the engine block, they would run coolant through the engine and then through this pipe. And I bet you when we go inside, this is plumbed right into the motor. Instead of having a radiator use the water around the barge to cool the uh, coolant for the engine. These big things here are what they would drive down into the mud to hold the barge in place. Some people see this thing as an eyesore and a piece of junk, but I see this as like the peak American industrialism. All right, I can see in this window, I'm gonna show you guys. It is pretty cool. I'm excited to get in there. Look at this old round window. Can you see it? Can you see it in there? It looks like a big diesel engine. If I had to guess, in my expertise of old junk motors, that looks like a four-cylinder natural Detroit engine in there. Wow. Look at this thing. Look at all these pulleys and cogs and belts. This is awesome. It's even got a heater in here, a little tool room, some electrical work. Looks like I wired this one up. Actually, that looks a little good for me. That's probably throttle. They tell me this was made out of an old car differential. I cut it up and turned it into this dredge right here. This goes out to the dredge head. It's all welded up out of makeshift parts. Look at these valves, look at this stuff. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I don't know what these do, I'm gonna do a little investigating, but I bet that these are hydraulic brakes for these drums here. Got some gauges, tachometer, a light. You've even got a rear view mirror. I am literally geeking out right now. I think this is the coolest thing. This looks like something like I would build out of what I have to get a job done. This is so cool. I'm so excited about this. Now for the moment I've been waiting for at least, I'm gonna go down and see the engine and the running gear. I think this is gonna be pretty awesome. Not sketchy at all. There we have it. Look at the size of that pump. Oh my goodness. And look at that. Detroit four-cylinder natural right there. Just as I suspected. Look at that thing. That is awesome. Look, the fuel tank is just a drum. All that caulking for wood boats. They probably just jammed this thing full of tar and caulk and put her in and let her swell. That is a motor I am not too familiar with, but they are really popular in industrial use and the military. This is the pump that would... Uh, run and suck all the dredge spoils from that head on the end of the boom there. And it would pump it through here, through this tube, around here, and then up through that pipe. As soon as I pulled in the marina, I looked past all the million dollar yachts, the sport fishers, none of that interests me. I saw this thing and I was like, oh, I got to get permission to get in that thing. This is true ingenuity and American industrialism right here. All right, since we got an initial look around, we're going to follow the power as if the motor were running and figure out how this thing works. 
All right, we're gonna start at the motor, this four cylinder Detroit two stroke diesel. It's fired up, it's running. This is the crank pulley. This is spinning around, it's got these two belts. We'll follow it down to here. There's this homemade tensioner to keep tension on the belts. Comes down here to this other crank pulley that's been welded to this shaft. Spins the shaft in these bearings, comes down to here. First belts come off of it, go to the primer pump. All right, that goes up into here, through the ceiling, drops down into the main pump to prime it. So that's going, the motor's running. This is priming the dredge pump. Come over here, probably a guy sitting on this bar stool, flicks this PTO and engages this. That starts to spin this shaft with these belts down under the floor here. That is a differential out of an old dump truck. So that goes in, there's a shaft inside here that goes into a gear that turns it, that shaft spinning up there. All right, so that's running, that's all spinning. Come up here, that shaft spins into this differential. This differential has an axle that goes into here, spins these belts, and then there's a series of brakes and chains that move all of these winches. And I think two of these winches run those big piles out back so you can raise and lower them to hold the dredge in place. And I think one or two of them move this boom on the front up and down with the dredge head on it. That spins and then pumps the dredge spoil up under the floor here. So right off of the transmission on here, this motor's running. You stick this thing in gear. It engages this shaft that's spinning this dredge spoil pump, and sucks it up through this tube, and then out of there. And then they pump it out of the boat usually through a big tube to wherever they're pumping the dredge spoil to. It's got these big brass porthole windows in it, and it just makes me sad to think that they probably will never rebuild this thing. It's probably gonna get cut up and burned, to be honest. I hope they saved that engine out of it because that's a really good engine. It was a really popular engine, even today, still in work boats. She doesn't look like the most seaworthy vessel, you know, because you can see outside now. It's a good thing that I don't have a really big yard with nothing in it because I would be getting this thing shipped as lawn art because I just, I appreciate it. I can appreciate the construction and the industrialism and ingenuity that went into just using what you had to build something and then not throw it away when it breaks. You have to figure it out, use what you got and fix it. I just, mm, that is just lost in today's generation. And I'm only 26, I'm not that old, but this is how I operate. Like, I just look at a problem, I see what I have and how am I gonna use what I have to accomplish the task that needs to be done? And man, I'll tell you what, this level of resourcefulness and ingenuity I think is just lost. And this thing is just a piece of art to me. It's like mechanically genius to just use car parts from the 20s and 30s. I mean, the pump head is made out of leaf springs out of Model T and Model A Fords. It's incredible. And all these differentials and uh, Gearboxes and everything are all out of old Ford pickups. I can only imagine sitting here in the 1940s and 50s, this pump's running, we're dredging the freaking harbor and stuff, flipping switches and stuff like that. Total disregard for any kind of safety or OSHA. Just the heyday of American freaking pride. It's so cool. Uh, what I wouldn't give to go back and like operate equipment just like this. Look, there's hammers everywhere, a dipstick, I mean, you got everything you need. This is back when people felt like they got things done, they were moving earth. Really can appreciate this thing for what it is. Most people see trash, but I just see, it's like a piece of art. It's a piece of time, you know? It's just, man, the manpower that went into building this. The people this thing employed, you know? It's just, it's really cool. It's really, really cool. Coming out of here. Look at that big thing. That is crazy.
Look at that. Even had a little whirly thing and shingles on the roof. Pretty neat. We'll give you a walk around the whole thing so you can really, truly appreciate the entire thing. I am so thankful that I got to go and explore this thing because it may not be here in the next time I come back. If you know where this thing is, please don't come down and try to crawl in and out of it. I got special permission from the people here. Please be respectful to the owners and their property. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more cool stuff like this, really anything I come across. I think this is the coolest thing. Anytime I find more stuff like this, I'm going to try to make a video about it. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.